Good afternoon, 2Ds. Um, my voice is still a little bit rough, but hopefully this is going to go fairly quickly so you don't have to listen to me for too long. Um, our topic today is applications of parabolas, and our goal is to apply what we know about parabolas to models of real-life situations. Now notice that real life is in quotes. Uh, we're only going to do very general models of real-life situations because there's a whole lot of other stuff going on, and if you really want to get into that, you're going to have to take a physics class. Right now we're just going to talk about applications of parabolas, and there's lots of things in real life that actually follow a parabolic path. Um, all projectiles move in a parabolic path in regards to space and time and financial situations can have a parabolic model uh, applied to them as well. So we're going to deal mostly with projectiles today and we're going to deal with cases where we've been given an equation already. We don't have to come up with an equation. Tomorrow or in the next lesson we're going to deal with things where we definitely have to come up with an equation. So we're going to start with something that I hope you guys all know is projectile motion. We're going to think about an angry bird. Uh, and if you have ever played angry birds, you can see that they actually do trace a parabolic path along the page. So our example number one, an angry bird is shot as a pig. Its height, h, above the pig in meters after t seconds can be modeled by h equals negative 4.9 bracket t minus 2 squared plus 29. Okay, so we've got this equation here, and it says, what was the maximum height reached by the bird? Well, let's have a look. What is this telling us? It's telling us that we have an angry bird up here. He's being launched at a pig down here, and so we've got our little pig here that's on the ground, and he gets hit by our bird. Okay, now we want to know the maximum height reach. So if we take a look at our parabolic path, we want this spot up here. Well, we know that spot up there to be the vertex, and we also know from our um, from our work with them that we can actually just pick the vertex out of here. This vertex up here is 2, 29. And let's take a look at what those variables are here. Instead of an x, we have a t, and t stood for time since it was fired. And instead of a Y, we have an H, where H stood for height above the pig. Okay. So we've got time and we've got height. And so our 2 stands for time and the 29 stands for height. So this says, what was the maximum height reached by the bird? Well, 29. So we want 29 meters. Anytime they ask you for a maximum, if it's in completed square form, you're always looking for this number on the end here. Uh, when did it reach maximum height? Now it's asking us a when question. It's asking us for time. And it's asking us for the time when it was at maximum height. So it's still asking us about the vertex, and but it's asking us for the other variable there. So in two seconds, it reached its maximum height. Now, anything else they ask about it, um, you need to figure out, are they asking you about height or are they asking you about time? And if they're asking you about one or the other, then you must know something about the one that they're not asking you about. So in this case, it says, how much higher than the pig was the slingshot that launched the bird? Okay, so when the bird was on the slingshot, what do we, do we know anything about height? No, because it's asking us that. It's asking us for height. So we must know something about time when the pig, when the, um, when the bird was still on the slingshot. So time when the bird was on the slingshot was zero. So if our t is zero, we just have to sub it into here. So we have h equals negative 4.9 bracket 0 minus 2 squared plus 29. Um, 0 minus 2 is negative 2 squared is 4 so I need negative 4.9 times 4 plus 29. And negative 4.9 times 4 is 19, negative 19.6 so negative 19.6 plus 29 is 9.4. So it was 9.4 meters when it was first fired. 
So 9.4 meters is where the slingshot was right here and it's above pig level because the pig's sitting on the ground. So it's above that little thing. So it was 9.4 meters after it was launched. And then it says how long does it take before the bird kills the pig? So how long tells us that we're talking about time which must mean we know something about age when the bird kills the pig. Well when the bird kills the pig it must be in contact with the pig and since the pig's on the ground our height is zero. So now we have to set zero equal to h and this is the one um, this is a x-intercept um, zero or sorry t there's my eraser, there's my eraser t minus 2 squared plus 29. And so now we have to go about getting this t by itself. So I'm going to first subtract 29 on both sides. So I get minus 29 equals negative 4.9 t minus 2 squared. Then I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 4.9 and over here I get 5.9184. I'm going to leave lots of decimal places so I don't get a round off error and I'm going to get t minus 2 on this side squared. Now the next thing I have to do here is take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of this and remember when you take the square root there's always a positive and a negative square root. So square root of this is about 2.4 which is t minus 2. And the last thing I'm going to do to get t by itself is I have to add 2 to both sides. And I have two different things to add to here. If I add 2 to positive 2.4, I get 4.4. If I add 2 to negative 2.4, I get negative 0.4. And of course, a negative time doesn't make any sense. So this answer we deem inadmissible. It is not possible. Inadmissible. So we say, therefore, it takes 4.4 seconds to kill the pig. Okay, moving right along to the next example. And I've got this uh, big disclaimer up here in red that says, remember, you don't know anything about maximum and minimum values until you have completed the square. That's the whole purpose of completing the square is to figure out what the vertex is. And the vertex gives us all kinds of information. And most important of that information is it tells us about maximum and minimum values. So for example, too, it says a punter kicks a football. Its height h in meters after t seconds is given by this equation and it says what is the maximum height? Well we don't know what that maximum height is until we complete the square. So we're going to complete the square on this thing and hopefully you remember how to complete the square. The first thing we're going to do is put brackets around the first two terms and then we're going to pull out that negative 4.9. So when I pull out that negative 4.9, I get a t squared minus, and 22.54 divided by 4.9 is 4.6t. And we're going to leave this plus 1.1 on the end there for a while. Now I'm going to jump down a couple of steps. Negative 4.9. If this up here was a perfect square bracket, then the squared bracket it must have come from is t minus 2.3. Remember we just have to take half of this term to figure out what went in here. And now to figure out what is actually missing from here, I have to square this term. So we divide by 2 and then square this to put it back up here. And when I square that I get 5.29, so plus 5.29. But remember, I have to subtract that 5.29 again, so I'm not actually changing anything, just changing the way it looks. Now, I really wanted it only to, to this, because this bracket here is the completed, is, is the same as this bracket here. Those two represent exactly the same thing. So I need to get this negative 5.29 out of there, and the way I do that is I multiply by the number out front. And when I multiply by the number out front, now I have negative 4.9 t squared minus 4.6 t plus 5.29. And when I multiply the front 
by this I get a positive um, 25.9 25.921 and this plus 1 is still hanging around here here the plus 1.1 1 .1. so now I'm just gonna put these two things together here to give me what goes on the end and that's gonna give me 27 point zero two one so therefore the max height is about and it's this thing out here I know what my vertex is now my vertex is two point three comma twenty seven point zero basically uh, and this here gives me time and this gives me height and I want the maximum height which is going to be that so the maximum height is about 27 meters now the next one says when did the ball reach maximum height well we already have that answer it's this here this time that goes with the maximum height is when it was at maximum height so I'm going to take uh, just take that out of there it says at 2.3 seconds we already got it it was from up here it's the other thing from the vertex what was the height of the ball when the punter kicked it now remember you gotta ask yourself what are they asking me for what was the they're asking us for height so if they're asking us for height that means I must know something about time so when the punter kicked it what do we know about time well time is zero because that's we said time started when the ball was kicked so time equals zero so we're gonna sub zero in for t now I could sub zero in for t in here but it would be a whole lot easier if I subbed zero in for t in this equation that didn't have the square completed because that is one thing that's really easy to do if I set t equal to zero what I get is h equals negative four point nine zero squared which is just going to all be zero plus twenty two point five four times zero which is just going to all be zero plus one point one so one point one meters was the height of the ball when it was kicked and we could have just got that straight out of the question this is actually the y-intercept and you can get the y-intercept out of the general form and the last question that I'm going to ask is how long was the ball in the air well how long was the ball in the air what are we being asked to find we're being asked to find how long which is time so if we're being asked to find time we must know something about height when the ball's in the air well when the ball's in the air height is something other than zero as soon as the ball hits the ground as soon as it makes contact with the ground then height is zero so if I know and let's just take a rough sketch of this here I've got the ball traveling along and I want to know how long so I want to know this in here how long was it in the air well if I figure out what this spot is then I know how long it was in the air I go from zero to that spot so I'm gonna set height equal to zero because now the ball is on the ground after it's no longer in the air so height is zero and this time we do need the completed square version of it the completed square version is negative 4.9 t minus 2.3 squared plus 27.021 uh, now the first thing we're going to do, we're trying to get this T out of here. This T is locked in tight on this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this thing out here. I need to get rid of this by subtracting 27.029 Whoops. on both sides. So when I subtract that on both sides, then on this side I get negative 27.029. And on this side I get negative 4.9 t minus 22.3 squared now the next thing I can get rid of is this negative 4.9 it's just multiplying this thing so to get rid of it I divide and if I divide both sides by that negative 4.9 uh, on this side I get 5.5 5, uh, 145 leave a few decimal places so I don't get round off error and that's going to equal t minus 2.3 all squared 
Now the next thing I have to do, I've got that bracket squared, so I'm going to take the square root of it. And when I take the square root, remember you're going to have a plus and a minus anytime you take the square root. And so that's going to be 2.35 equals t minus 2.3. And now I have to add that 2.3 on both sides. And I've got two different things here. I've got negative 2.35 and positive 2.35 to add on to. So if I add 2.3 to positive 2.35, I get 4.65. And if I add it to negative 2.35, I get negative 0 0.05 equals t. And of course, negative time makes no sense. Uh, it's that little bit over on this side here. Uh, is what it's giving us is the other x-intercept over there but this side of the graph doesn't make any sense because that's negative time so this is inadmissible just means that it makes sense mathematically but in the context of the question uh, it's uh, useless so we say therefore it is in the air for 4.65 seconds. And that's it for this lesson.